Hi, welcome back to Hill Country Bible Church Pflugerville Elementary Students Program. My name's Mr. Cummins, and we have been studying the Bible together week after week going through, and today's story is in Luke chapter two, which will be really familiar to you because we often read this at Christmas time. So it's okay to say Merry Christmas. I know that, you know, here it is in the end of spring coming close to summer but uh, it's a great, great time for us to learn about the life of Jesus. Right now, we're gonna stand up and, and sing together. So if you would all go ahead and make yourself some room right now where you can move around and praise God with your voices and with your emotions with your body as well. Let me pray for us. God, thank you for this time that we have to worship together. I pray, God, that we would each hear your voice and be able to sing with our voice your praise today. In Jesus' name, amen. Our eyes have seen your glory and all that you Step down from the heavens into this world you made a sacrifice for sinners. There is no higher name above all names. Your name is love.
morning, boys and girls. I am so glad to be with you. This is Mrs. Hill here, and we're going to be working on our verse again today. So uh, let's, let's get right to it. Here we go. Let's see if we can say it from the beginning. You ready? Habakkuk 2, 4, oops, my fingers didn't work. Let's try that again. Habakkuk 2, 14. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Habakkuk 2, 14. Well done. Good job, explorers. You know, this verse is, was really encouraging when Habakkuk told the Israelites about it because the Babylonians were really giving them lots of trouble. And it, but, it, but part of the verse that I want to point out is it says, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. That means it hadn't happened yet, but the people were discouraged because they were under the rule of the Babylonians. And remember, they were slaves and they had to be separated from their families. It was very sad for them. So Habakkuk was encouraging them with this verse because he said, someday the world will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. And you know, earth in this verse really means the people of the earth. It's not just that the earth will just have beautiful creation that God made. He made that from the very beginning, but it means that the whole, the people of the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. And you know what? the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord is really a person that we're studying just today. We're gonna to study about him again. It is Jesus is the fulfillment of the glory of the Lord. He is God's glory that came to earth to be born in a manger. And then when he grew up, some wicked men came and they put him on a cross and they nailed him to the cross because he lived a perfect life and he was the only worthy sacrifice to pay the price for your sin and mine. Wow, isn't that amazing? Because the verse talks about everyone will know about Jesus. And you know how people know about Jesus? It's when you and I tell our friends what we know about Jesus and then they'll know about Jesus and they can tell their friends too, right? Isn't that amazing? Okay, we're gonna do the verse one more time and we're gonna whisper it this time. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take this off of the screen this time and let's see if we can do it without. All right, here we go. Can you do it? Habakkuk 2.14. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. One more, oh, Habakkuk 2.2.14, okay. One more time without looking, okay, here we go. Habakkuk 2, 14. For the, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Habakkuk 2, 14. Thank you for learning this verse with us, uh, boys and girls. I'm going to ask you when we get back together if you know this verse. This is a great one to hide in your heart. Bye. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Hey, guys. I'm Sean Waverider, and this is my good friend Cass Company. Merry Christmas! What? Merry Christmas! It's the end of May. Uh-huh. June starts like tomorrow. Uh-huh. What? Okay, so like, I know it's not like Christmas, Christmas, you know, like December 25th, Christmas, but like- I so noticed. Let me explain, right? So this morning I was reading in my Bible and it was my devotional was the gospels, right? And where the gospels start with the story of Jesus's birth, you know, the Christmas story. Okay. So I was thinking if I can read the Christmas story any day of the year, then why do I only have to celebrate Christmas one day a year? You know, like, like Jesus didn't come down to save us from our sins one day of the year. He came down to save us from our sins 365 days of the year. So I, therefore, think that we should be able to celebrate Christmas every day. You know what? I absolutely agree. I, 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 I'm absolutely on board with that logic. Because when you, th all right, think about it this way, mm -hmm. right? Uh, if Jesus, when he came to save us, like he came down as a child and then died, he didn't die or he didn't come as a child or die to save us for just that one day or just those two days, mm -hmm. right? He came to save us 
forever. Exactly. So I think it is absolutely appropriate to celebrate Christmas or Easter or Jesus or whatever every single day of the year. Well, I'm glad you agree with me. In that case, we should go celebrate Christmas right now. Bye, explorers. We'll see you next week. Enjoy the Bible story. I don't have any presents for you. Mary and Joseph lived in the town of Nazareth. During the time Mary was pregnant, the Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus announced that everyone needed to be registered for a census. Since Joseph was a descendant of King David, he and Mary traveled to Bethlehem, the city of David. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. Mary and Joseph looked for a safe place to stay, but every place was full. So Mary and Joseph found a place where animals were kept, and that is where Mary had her baby. Joseph named him Jesus. Mary wrapped the baby tightly in cloth and laid him in a feeding trough. That night, some shepherds were watching over their sheep in the fields near Bethlehem. Suddenly, an angel stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. I have very good news for you and for all the people. Today, a savior who is the Messiah and the Lord was born for you in the city of David. Then the angel said, you will find a baby wrapped tightly in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a whole army of angels appeared, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to people he favors. When the angels left and returned to heaven, Ooh. the shepherds decided to go see if the angels' words were true. They hurried to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the feeding trough. Then the shepherds went and told others about the baby Jesus. Everyone who heard about Jesus was surprised and amazed. Mary thought about everything that was happening and tried to understand it. The shepherds returned to their fields, praising God because everything had happened just as the angel said. The birth of Jesus was good news. Jesus was not an ordinary baby. He is God's son, sent to earth from heaven. Jesus, the promised savior, came into the world to deliver us from sin and death. Hi, explorers, welcome back. Isn't it fun to hear stories about Jesus? I love to think about Christmas all year long, but it's especially fun that we get to do it now in May. Sing with us.
Christmas song, even though it's May. I thought it would be fun since we just said the Christmas story. Now on this one, we get to do some dynamics. So when I go like this, just a little bit, we start let down low, and then we get louder and louder. Here we go. Oh, come on, you faithful.
All right, so we have been talking about Jesus every week, and we're finally there, right? When we talk about all the different kings and we said, well, Jesus is the best king. And we've talked about all the different people in the history of Israel. And we've said, well, Jesus answers these prophecies. And now here he is in Luke chapter two. So I hope you enjoyed that video and understood some of what was going on there. And like I said before, the angels, the shepherds were all reminders of us of Christmas, what we normally celebrate then. We get to learn about it again today. And I hope that you get a chance to read in your Bible, Luke chapter two, maybe with fresh eyes, without some of the other distractions that we normally have with Christmas. Although, if you are just feeling motivated to maybe get your big sister a present just because you love her, go ahead and do that. That'll be fun too. So, um, but we know that Jesus is the king. And so as he is born in a miraculous way, as we see right here, it just reminds us of the power of God and how much he loves us. And I hope that you know how much God loves you. So that's the end of our lesson. And I'm gonna pray for us as we close. God, thank you again for this time that we have to celebrate who you are and even just to remember your birthday. What a special, special, fun time that must have been. And I pray, God, that each one of us would know the love of God, which passes understanding, but we can know it. And I pray in Jesus' name, amen.